second Nikola Tesla's non-dispersive concentrated energy projector, a lot of people know it as his death ray. Most people know of are the Van de Graaff generator. Charges are brought up to the upper terminal. Input requires HV DC. To get the HV DC, you first need some sort of energy input. We'll just assume we have, we have nuclear fuel. We set fuel to our boiler, which turns the turbine. The turbine then spins an alternator. The alternator takes the AC, puts it directly into a step transformer or Tesla coil that turns the output of the alternator into HV AC. I voltage alternator correct. That HV AC is then rectified into HV DC, and that HV DC is then fed directly into the tower. So you use the HV DC to actually be able to dump the charges into the upper terminal our vacuum bulb we've got these all over the upper terminal tesla says you can bring it up to 50 to 100 million volts that's a lot so essentially you, this upper terminal becomes extremely negatively charged but due to these special evacuated bulbs that tesla designed the upper terminal is not capable of arcing off the larger the voltage you can bring this upper terminal to the higher the charge that you can put on there the larger the electrostatic force that can be applied to some particle if it's the same charge if this is negative 50 million volts and this is negative 50 million volts what's going to happen to this shoo, 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 shoo. very fast with a lot of force if these are the same charge these are not staying near each other for very long and what tesla says what you need to do this effectively is you have to have the particulate in a very high vacuum so that it can actually accelerate to its full velocity. The premise of this whole thing is not that it would shoot off electric beams for electricity and electric arts at lightning bolts. The premise of this, he says, is that he would have a reel of thin tungsten wire and you feed that into a nibbler, all these little tungsten bits, each of them individually between a 15 centimeter long nozzle to go from zero meters per second to 16,000 meters per second. For a record, speed of sound, 340 meters per second. It's like Mach 40. It's kind of insane. 